Welcome to Grolix. Tonight's the Grolix Podcast Live Show. I'm Randy. I'm Melanie. And I'm Jesse. Tonight, we're going extra nights because we are a little later than usual. <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, hey, what's up, everybody? Paul, Savannah. Savannah, you didn't watch You didn't watch a trauma movie in preparation? Um, Paul, what's going on? Paul, this is your fault. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so tonight we are just, yeah, we'll be talking trauma movies. We all uh, consume some type of trauma media, and... Or it consumed us. Or it consumed us, Mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about it. And then, uh, and also, uh, trauma now. I tried that out. Maybe I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, And then a couple other things before that we'll hit on. All spooky Halloween-related things. But first, how are you two doing? I'm doing all right. Yeah, doing okay. I always, I always make sure to check in with you guys right off yeah. the top. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, and I just tweeted this out without a link. That's that's. <laughs> 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 Tell your friends, folks. <laughs> let's, let's go. Live, let's, hashtag uh, <laughs> live streaming. No indication where. Nothing. No, not where. Uh, make, make them work for it. Savannah, we will, by the way, Savannah messaged me before, and she's like, I signed up for Twitch. I don't want to be on Facebook. Uh, and I was like, oh. Neither do we. We're yeah, just, here uh, we are. We're only streaming on Facebook right now. Um, we'll get back on Twitch. We'll, we'll get back. We'll, we'll reach out the uh, greasy tendrils, tentacles, the Grolix tentacles to all the s- services again. But We were getting crazy. twitchy. Yeah, just Facebook right now. Um, that's it's your guys's fault that's where you guys keep t- kept listening or uh, watching on so that's where we stuck to you even got uh maddie d to do it yeah and he's he doesn't like social me- social media right right I, uh, he invited me to like 60s reboot podcast on facebook which means he's creating even more facebook pages so mm-hmm. uh paul asked side note does jesse know who lloyd kaufman's mentor was it was clearly um, Andy Kaufman. Clearly. How about uh, Charlie Kaufman? Not the one Charlie Kaufman that's like Lloyd's brother, but the Charlie Kaufman that made uh, being John Malkovich. Is that his name? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. It's some type of Kaufman. This could be something ridiculous like uh, Jim Henson. No, it's Charlie Kaufman. Oh, it is Charlie Kaufman. Are all the Kaufmans weird? Oh, Savannah says, I'm only back to watch you guys, then I'm going to delete again. That's fair. Okay. Facebook, I... Yeah, it's 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 the one I spend the most time on, but it's because of, I don't know, well, Messenger, but I don't even really count that at this point. It's almost like its own separate thing. Mm-hmm. But it's, I don't know, Facebook groups, I guess, maybe, or something it's really the only thing i hop on for yeah um john g alver avildsen from rocky and karate kid well all right that's what paul was saying about lloyd kaufman's mentor Mm. uh well let's go ahead and jump into some talk uh before we get to trauma though uh Let's talk about a little bit about what else we might have, con- non-trauma things we might have consumed. Uh, because, uh, as we mentioned last week, Melanie and I had planned to go to the drive-ins. The drive-ins? Mm-hmm. Drive-in. The one, the one singular. drive-in that we have <laughs> yeah. Right. locally. Yeah. Uh, last Friday. And we did. And we seen Halloween Kills mm-hmm. and John Carpenter's The Thing in the drive-in. It was quite the experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... First, let's talk about the drive-in. Hey, Melanie, how did you? How was your? Did you have a good time? Uh, yeah, it was fine. It was a little chilly, but other than that, it was uh, it was pretty good. 
Savannah says she read a book called On Dead and On Wed. <laughs> oh. I think I've read that before. Yeah? Actually. Is it like a sort of a comedy romance uh, zombie, or not even zombie, I think it was like a vampire thing. I think I've read it. On Dead and Loving It? It's actually a whole series, so that might could be one of them. Who knows? <laughs> that just makes me think of that Mel Brooks vampire uh, parody, Dracula parody. Mm-hmm. Why am I getting loud beeps? Okay. Um, I don't think you guys could hear it. It's fine. Well, yeah. yes. So the drive-in, it was fun. It was mm -hmm. cold. I, I'd say the highlight. I like that drive-in. Mm -hmm. They really, I think they built in an unfortunate area. They built in some low land because I don't even know when it had rained last. But it was wet there, and they're like, make sure to park in these areas and don't pull through the grass because you'll get stuck in ruts. It's very moist. And I'm like, when did it rain? Mm -hmm. And they had a similar problem last time we went to um, earlier this summer. So I, I think they kind of, you know, a little unfortunate in their location. Um, otherwise, they're fine. I didn't go to the concessions this time, so I can't speak on that. I was not a fan of their concessions last time I went but it was still like I don't know if like they were operating how they normally do and that's the food they normally give out or if they were operating in a like dealing with COVID way mm -hmm. and that's why the food seems like it had been sitting out for three hours <laughs> during the first movie mm -hmm. but um... I thought it was weird uh, I noticed when we I don't know if it was when we first got in or right after we had pulled in, but there was a sign talking about um, no outside food or drink allowed unless you paid. Yeah. Like a, I don't remember what it was exactly. Food tax, let's say. It's not exactly what it is, but I didn't know that you could do that. That was, I mean, that's, I usually take food. I didn't know I needed to pay extra for it, but um, it's interesting that they let you do that. Right. It, it's smart of them to do it that way because they got to know people are going to bring food anyway. Yeah. It's like it, pe people do it to a regular movie theater. And in yeah. this, like you drive up in your car, right? So mm -hmm. um, it's smart of them to be like, maybe we can at least get a few honest people to like compensate us for what we're losing out in concessions. Right. Because I'm assuming uh, the ticket prices aren't much more. In fact, going to a drive-in... Um, even though price per person for the actual ticket might be a little bit more expensive, it's like 10 bucks. If you aren't spending money on concessions, it's a much cheaper movie night than yeah. going to the regular theater. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's smart. It's So I'm assuming they work like a regular theater in that most of their money would probably come from the concession, the concession yeah. stand. Yeah. Especially when you consider you get to see multiple movies. For the right. ticket price instead of just one. That's a good point. It's, a, it's always a double feature. It's nice to see they're making concessions about their oh. concessions. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can barely I, stand it. <laughs> I, what, you had to get both sides of it in there, huh? <laughs> it sure did. Um, so I will say, one, uh, the, the projector is real nice. The sound was better this time. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a quiet place. Two. That's the thing. A quiet place. <laughs> Two. The sound. And it maybe it was the mix of the movie. But the sound was distractingly weird. It would cut out. But not just like... You could almost tell that whatever broadcast situation they have, after after like it hits a certain like low volume, it actually cuts out. And that's mm -hmm. what it sounded like was happening during A Quiet Place 2. Um, but I have actually have not went to like revisit that movie in a normal setting, so I don't know. Uh, but I will say that aspect was a lot better. It's super cool in a drive-in where it you it kind of creates its own like surround sound situation, even though it's not proper sound surround sound, because uh, especially during large large loud parts. You get all the all the cars or anybody who's got you know their car stereo on or radios out there, like it's all playing the sound, and so it, you get this weird 
field of sound thing around you going on. Mm-hmm. Um, the highlight, though, bright projector, picture looked great. That's something that um, uh, I think Maddie D and somebody else commented on one of my pictures that the, that the image looked amazing. And I was like, yeah, no, they have a great projector there. Like, I took a still picture, and it looked pretty crisp. And mm-hmm. that's, you know, through a, just a camera. Um, very bright. And Michael Myers was stalking around most of the uh, first movie. Yeah, that was fun. They had a kind of short. He was a little short to be Michael Myers. <laughs> But they had a Michael Myers stalking around um, until he made, uh, I'm sure he was still around, but eventually he, uh, him being around and then also seeing Michael Myers up on the screen viciously murdering people uh, was a little bit too much for one of my nieces. <laughs> and yeah. uh, she, uh, she was having a fit for a little bit. Um, and I noticed he didn't come around, our, at least our area, too much after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, they probably could have seen that one coming, maybe. I mean, to be, f- I, I don't, I don't blame them. It's a rated R movie, so like you bring your kids at your own peril. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, also, it, that's not a surprise that you, right. you, some kids are going to freak out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the movie itself, though, Melanie, what did you think of Halloween Kills? Um, I, I, I'm trying to <laughs> trying to hand the mic off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like the beginning. It, the, it, the movie kind of had two feels to it. It was like a, a sequel to the original, and then a sequel to the last movie. Um, and I I liked the I liked it. I liked that part of it, and I liked the old part of it a lot. The new part was okay. It. It still had kind of um, that weird, the thing I didn't like about the last one, if anything, that, you know, it's, he's evil and evil is, you know. It's got to die. It, it's got to die tonight. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you seen it, Jesse? Uh, yeah, I watched it on Peacock. Interesting. Okay. So, you're t- you sound like you have, a, you have a take on it. I might. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I have a really hard time remembering. How long has evil haunted this town? Um, I want to say something like 40 years. <laughs> Maybe. They hardly ever mention it. <laughs> ever. Yeah. Uh, I, okay, so I enjoyed it. I did not enjoy it as much as the last Halloween, Halloween 2018. Mm-hmm. But Jesse, your your complaint hits on something that, like my least favorite thing, and I kind of had to like let it digest a little bit. Yeah, I kind of hate a lot of the dialogue. Anytime just beat that into the ground, man. The forty like, years I could let it go the first like two or three times or whatever because they're like in a bar and it's like drunk people repeat themselves all the time. Like I can mm-hmm. handle that to a certain point, but then it was just like. Oh my God! Has it been forty years? Has it? <laughs> and yeah. anytime they go to what's his name, Tommy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Tommy. I hated his character. In yeah, this. and he he's, was the he was the criminal. Like he was the worst offender of that. He's so like, cheesy. Like his character is so cheesy. It just. And you know what? I guess fine. There are people like that, but you know that is that is the negative aspect of it to me. Um, I think being a nerd and then turning into like the the big jock type guy just made him into a, a very annoying person. Maybe. <laughs> like, yeah, that's how he is in real life. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It might be. He's good at that though. He, he's 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 the kind of person who comes across cheesy when they're just trying to be earnest. But it's like, dude, just give it up. Come on. Yeah. Relax. Uh, And to be honest, I started watching it again because since it, since it, you know it is available, sure, not in the theater, but I didn't get very far. I was like, I'm not going to even rate it because I don't. I need to think about it. Maybe I'll give it a second watch and then I'll I'll log it on Letterboxd. Mm-hmm. And I got a little ways into it, and I was like, 
Yeah, I'll just give it like three and a half stars. Three stars. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, far from the worst Halloween movie by far. Like, That's... I enjoyed it overall, but like, man, the stuff that was annoying was really annoying. Yeah. One of the good and or bad things, depending on how you look at it, I about this one, more than any of the other Halloweens, I, I think at least, they get you to like the characters. Like you're like, yeah, they're they're cool people. They're they're fine, and then they and then they murder them. You know? That's a, so that's kind of the interesting thing. Like the main characters kind of suck. Yeah. But all the little bit characters that are just there to like up the body count, I love those characters. They do uh -huh. such amazing character work. You've got the uh, the one married couple. I'm assuming they're married couple. And oh like yeah. So many of these characters pop up like just tangentially in the last Halloween movie. I love the amount of consistency even if they do kind of beat your head over the beat your beat your beat your head over the head with it <laughs> beat yeah. you over the head a little bit with it but um you know there's the lady playing with the uh, the drone the little drone doing flips uh -huh. oh yeah which led into kind of a horrible like the kills seem more malicious in this mm -hmm. i'll say that like there's more attempt to make people feel bad which is weird Michael yeah. seems like he's comes across as less like cold killing machine and more like creating dioramas. <laughs> yeah, like, cold killing a diorama, machine, but enjoying it. Yeah. And like she's the one lady still alive, and he's and the husband's at, like dead at that point, and he's just like grabs a knife, stab it into him. Look over at her, grabs a knife, stab it into him. That's that's cold. Anyway, my point is. Uh. His little bit with the CPAP mask and the, like the Cheez Its and wine and like just all these little things for characters that are in there for like two minutes to get killed off. Mm -hmm. They're great. Big John and Little John? Yeah. They're great. Uh, was it Little John or Big John? Which one, which one would just wanted to put on old spooky records and dang, get, get high? I think that was, was Big John. That was Big John, yeah. Big, yeah. Big John might have had the most character development of any character in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We find out and, about his, his and, dead mother. It was like, who is this? What? <laughs> Way more screen time than Jamie uh, Lee Curtis, too. Right, mm -hmm. right. So like, she's like, barely in this movie. Yeah. But she was supposed to be unconscious for a lot of it, too, so. Paul said my favorite scene is the mob versus Danny DeVito because that felt like a real situation. That No, people love Danny DeVito. That was sad, but honestly, like it went a little better than it could have. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought that guy was gonna get ripped apart. Not to go into yeah. hardcore spoilers, but Yeah. Um Yeah, so it excels at that, but the main characters are not mm -hmm. very good, I felt, in this. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's uh, Melanie yeah, the mom, touched... the granddaughter, J.B. Yeah. and Curtis. Like, like, they were all kind of weak sauce. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Maybe they're just like, well, we did all their big character development last movie. <laughs> this movie why, why would they need to be important anymore? Mm -hmm. I, I, I love the thing where the sheriff guy, or wherever he is, maybe he's not a sheriff, but the cop, right. was telling Jamie Lee Curtis that it's not about her. And I'm like, yes, finally somebody tell her it's not all about you, woman. <laughs> That was great. He's like, it's, it's got nothing to do with you. It's mm -hmm. not all about you. Yeah, that was pretty good. Because that re... Maybe that's intentional, though. Like, Maybe yeah. she's supposed to come across as self-centered, and the whole point of this was like putting it in her face of like, no, that's mm -hmm. not the deal. Stop it. It's not... This the world doesn't revolve around y your imaginary feud with Michael Myers. Um, mm -hmm. Melanie touched on something though that I really liked, or at least was amused by. I mean, I liked it too. Is how the movie starts off picking up right from the end of not only Halloween 2018, but the original Halloween. We get like right from the end of both movies, and I'm like, that's this is might be the most sequel thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Sequelception, and the the set in the past stuff looked great. I don't know if it's the color grading or what, but it it matched pretty well. And all the kids look like little weird looking seventies kids too. I think Paul says. I mean, if you're scared out of your guard, and someone says that's the killer, everyone everyone is gonna 
turn on that person, that scene was epic. <laughs> Sequelception. Yeah, it, it was. Um, I like the idea of the mob mentality. I just feel like it was handled in such a cheesy way. When everybody started like, evil dies tonight. When everybody started like just repeating that. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mm, that's a bit much. And I'm that's surprised, a bit much. I'm surprised hospital security wasn't better. Uh, because the hospitals in Omaha have better security than that. Like, it's, it's, they have doors that are locked that you can't get in. You know, unless they like buzz you through after you go through a metal detector in the ER, you know, and these and they have a, a whole hospital full of people that just came in and, and pushed their way. In. But I guess maybe it's a small town, too. So I don't know. But th that seemed slightly un unrealistic to me. I was going to say, listen, Mike Myers has been haunting that place for like what? I don't know. Twenty eight point seven years. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it. I do want to get through a rewatch. Um it's got, man, it's got, what's the word? I, I guess epic Halloween action scenes or Halloween por por porn for Halloween fans. I don't know what you call it, but like it's got some really cool sequences. I don't want to get into spoilers, but I'm a little torn on the end. Like what, what that means, that bugs me because it kind of undermines a little bit of what the best part is. Of Halloween, yeah, yeah, that yeah. He's just some dude. He's just some dude, but also, is he just some dude? Mm -hmm. I like that. There's the question. He does seem supernatural, but when it comes down to it, mm, he's nah, he's probably just a guy, though. Mm -hmm. It it. Paul says they didn't quite iron out the ending. Yeah, it it definitely suffers from <laughs> the new chant. Hell no. The boogeyman must go. <laughs> Savannah says it's 43 years. Um, it did also suffer from like, maybe a little bit of the issue with the end is like, it's obviously not the end. The last one, obviously, yes, they are setting up for a sequel because as with all movies, you don't see a body, they're not dead. Mm -hmm. This one, it was like Matrix Reloaded or any other movie where they shoot the second one and third one at the same time. And the second one inevitably just doesn't have really a satisfying standalone. It's a Cult of Chucky thing, right? Where the end is just like, huh? Well, I mean, I guess there's more. So yeah, at least the last one, if that had been the last one, it's still an ending. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be another one? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> really? Well, I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> I I feel like that's why the end of this one felt a little clunky and awkward, at least the way it was shot, because it wasn't a definitive ending. Mm -hmm. it, I don't hate sequels, necessarily, but why can't people just make something new, you know? I don't know. This does feel like... Um more in the vein of like a Back to the Future 2 than an Empire Strikes Back. Mm. And I love me some Back to the Future 2, don't get me wrong, but it is not as good as the original. It's markedly less good. Mm -hmm. If there, It's the one I've seen the least. I've seen one and three so many times. Right. Apparently, I, do people not like three? I, I love three. I, I like three. Back to the I Future mean, 3. Right. None of none of them are as good as the first one. Of course but not. What are you gonna do? Watch Rick and um, Morty. And that's that's the same. Did you say Rick and Morty? Yeah. <laughs> okay. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Halloween. I'm sure on a future GCU or something, I'll get into much longer discussion about it. But I don't want to belabor conversation any longer i mean mm -hmm. 40 years <laughs> 40 years of evil mm -hmm. and savannah's right technically 43 but this movie takes place in 2018 so i <laughs> it's weird math it's weird math here's paul's comment and i just like the play how it plays out what are <laughs> we going to do tonight haddonfield the same thing we do every night make sure evil dies tonight tomorrow no tonight damn it Good, good fun. Mm -hmm. No. 
Yeah, I, I, I did kind of want to watch it again before I really talked about it at a lot of length. So, um, because I liked it, but I, I felt conflicted, and I've already said that. So let's move on. Okay, Jesse, though, how 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 sour did it leave you? Is this a is this a, a pass? I re- no no. It's I mean, fine if it is, but... man. I I completely get it because w- the substance that's there is pretty cheesy <laughs> yeah no i mean like it's it's just uh it's just a letdown is what it is it's like right. you know like in hindsight you know it's like i said it's far from the worst halloween movie i've ever seen it was it was a lot of fun in a lot of ways it just like the way that halloween ended i was like yeah this this could be cool if they keep this flavor you know keep this flavor and then they gave us some crazy other flavor and i was like the hell kind of flavor is this this is like, I don't know. I thought I was getting chocolate and peanut butter, and you just threw a little bit of strawberry in there for no reason. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like a variation of the same flavor, yeah. but it's like they made it wrong or something. So much more camp in this, and I just yeah. wasn't ready for it. You know, yeah, like I, I agree. I, th- I mean, they killed podcasters in the first one, so I should have known there was going to be some camp. But <laughs> that's true. They no. <laughs> true crime podcasters. Thank you. Are that yeah, that's a whole different breed. That's a different species. <laughs> right, and not the only ones, as evidence. <laughs> um, I feel like it's almost like the Kevin Smith He Man thing, where it's like. Like, this is the reverse of what happened there, you know? Like, it's like, if I had known where this was going all along, I'd be a little more forgiving of it kind of thing. Whereas, like, the He-Man revelation thing is, like, people aren't waiting to see where it's going, so they're not as forgiving of it. Right. It's like reverse revelation. Paul says it was good. I love it, but I think I might have oversold it. I think it might have oversold itself with all the delays. I I mean I was hyped for it I was pretty hyped for it but like a little cautious too, um, and it's another thing, kind of like malignant but different. Okay, but it's another thing where I've watched reviews of it since, and I've watched reviews of it by people just praising it. They loved it, and reviews of it people of people just trashing it. They did not care for it, and both reviews I'm like, they're kind of right. <laughs> they're both kind of right. <laughs> At least to a, an extent, uh, I, I, I'm more on the side of like reviews that are favorable towards it. But the people that dislike it, I see the reason, and I'm not. I'm kind of on board with like, yeah, I understand that. <clears throat> uh, Savannah says I can't get into the true crime entertainment stuff except the makeup girl on Facebook. I love her. Sorry. Paul says there's no middle ground right now. I mean, I'm a little bit there. I'm in the middle ground. It's kind of like malignant, but malignant is not even the same thing. <laughs> uh, I mean, I feel like trauma like is middle ground, man. Like <sighs> middle ground. That's where they live. Is in middle ground. Yeah. Is it tra- really? They know it though. As I feel like More they right. live like next to the landfill kind of they do <laughs> they do <laughs> but they know it <laughs> they embrace it yeah they're like this is a landfill this is where we live this is a mutated mess mm-hmm. we like it yeah okay. Okay. don't judge us or do we don't care mm-hmm. we'll tear off your nipple piercings don't don't you be toxic or we'll seek vengeance right <laughs> uh well that's was there anything else? I don't think I really watched anything else. That's that's a pretty good segue, unless you guys had other things you wanted to talk about. Unless uh, you had new things to say about the thing that you haven't already said. Just, it's wonderful. It's great. It's such a good movie. It's, that was an automatic five stars. Yeah. It looks Weird. good, too. I wouldn't have predicted that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We did watch something else that we have to mention. We have to oh, mention it. The fact okay. that we didn't, I uh, forgot... Jesse, would you'd be so ashamed if we didn't mention this? Okay. Have you heard of Benny Loves You? No. We watched Be- Benny Loves You. Yes. We should have watched this uh, two weeks ago, because Benny Loves You. It's a like a low budget kind of thing, um, horror comedy about a guy who's 
childhood stuffed stuffed bear gets possessed and oh, no. uh, I don't know if it is, gets possessed. like like it Ted back. with Mark Wahlberg? Y- yes. Yeah. But not exactly. But not exactly and it's essentially a slasher movie like this 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 stuffed bear just starts murdering people in his life. Mm. Dang. And, and he's definitely a, he's symbolic of Elmo cuz he's like Benny loves you and uh Stuff like that. Woo-hoo. Like, yeah, it's definitely an Elmo, a take on Elmo. But Someone a, put the wrong bear. tape inside of a Teddy Ruxpin. It's, uh, and it doesn't say anything else other than, like, the things that it would be programmed to say. It's not like a Chucky, <laughs> right? <laughs> I kind of love that. <laughs> um, I thought it was, it, it's pretty good. But, and the effects are pretty good. It's not quite a puppet, but kind of, like, it's just, like, you could tell it's just, like, burr, burr, burr. And I think it, most of the time it's CG, but it's really pretty good. It, or, that or it's just composited. Um, yeah, I think so. I think that's what it is. They just like had somebody like running with a dog, or because it's supposed to be a bear, it looks like a dog though, running with it in their hand, and then they like cut their cut it all out and stuck it on top of the other background or whatever. Right. That's what so it looks like. So it's still like you know floppy little stuffed creature, um, and it's just happy and runs around murdering people and it's 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 fun but it is fun but if you haven't seen it jesse uh it's worth a watch i feel like it might just be a rental but or maybe it's on shutter i'm not sure but uh if you ever get a chance i think you might enjoy it i don't think it's amazing just because i think it's good but it's very much sticks to its stick um yes and, and it doesn't take itself seriously enough to come across as like a legit horror movie. Um, that sounds bad, but I mean, like, it doesn't have the same like stakes, maybe, mm-hmm. because you're like, well, this world is clearly a little wacky, so mm-hmm. uh, enough characters act in. It's like the babysitter, right? Where. It leans more towards the comedy, even though it's thoroughly horror themed. But none of the characters come across as real enough people to to really get invested in it as like a thriller. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm. So, but it's got it's British. It's got a kind of a dry British kind of sense of humor, combined with uh, this sounds kind of amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. combined with uh, you know absurd absurd comedy, uh, horror slasher thing. Yeah, it's it's cool. Mm-hmm. The visual effects are pretty good. We recommend it, especially for Jesse. Yes. All right. Benny loves you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm glad I I'm glad I caught that. Mm-hmm. Trauma. Let's go to Traumaville. Okay. Um. I really don't want to go to New Jersey, but whatever. Hey, Paul. You suggested this, and you said you'd have things to say did you are you prepared to and did you want to hop on here with us i'll just throw that out there while he's mulling that over um who wants to start with this yeah let me know if you're paul let me know if you're ready here i'll shut i'll shoot you an invite link not to like extend the episode too much or anything but oh fine I'll go first while you're doing that okay I'm sorry yeah I watched Cannibal the musical with inebriated commentary so I did not even know that Cannibal the musical was part of the trauma collection but it is so you who because I'm not a huge fan of trauma myself um I knew I okay I knew Melanie I knew I was like, there's not going to be anything we're going to be able to find that Melanie is going to be happy with. And then I was looking through like the best trauma movies, and I was like, wait, Cannibal the Musical was a trauma film? Mm-hmm. And I know Melanie likes that. Uh, and it's a... Uh, I'll, I'll let her talk about it, but I was like, hey, Melanie, you know what's a trauma movie? So that <laughs> actually was kind of perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, so Cannibal the Musical, in case anybody didn't already know, is uh, a black comedy basically about it's there's a true story 
behind it, but it's not really it at all. But some guy named uh, Alfred Packer, and that's the main character, who is Trey Parker. So it's made by, it's, what is it, let me see. It is um, written by, directed by, co-scored by, and starring Trey Parker. Um, and Matt Stone's in it also. But basically it's Trey Parker. So um, basically South Park. Everything <laughs> Trey Parker, also Matt Stone's there. Yeah, except this was, well, I guess South Park maybe started also, but it's when while they were going to school in Colorado, film school. Um, so a lot of the people in the movie are uh, other people that go to the film school. I think he, they said even a couple other teachers are in it. Um, so that's fun. And that's I I would I did enjoy watching the commentary version of it because well besides the fact that they're drunken and silly, uh, which is fun, they did they did give you know a lot of information as the movie went along. Although there was a part where it, it like just dropped out and they were like we're drunk and we don't know what we're doing so we lost we lost it for a little bit but we're back so and the sound was kind of off but yeah um and if if i'm sure it's probably obvious by how we we're talking about it you've seen this movie yes a couple times at least yes before I've seen anyway it before. yeah mm -hmm. but never the drunken commentary right which is why well not the only reason why but that's part of the reason that i chose to to watch that one um so the story is there's a bunch of miners, um, prospectors, whatever, um, and they want to go uh, west to try to find gold. So they, they go that way, and it just ha happens that on their trip, uh, they run into like one of the worst winners ever or something, uh, and the party gets stuck up in the mountains, and... Um, end up, or at least one, at least one of them, if not more, uh, in real life. I mean, I'm not sure in in the um, thing more than just that, but end up beating each other. And then the guy, it begins actually, I think, with. Oh no! It, it first begins with him eating a bunch of people, but then it's because it's um, it, it's the idea that they're giving to the jury at the trial of him. Uh, after he's come back down. Uh, so their idea of it is just him running around, like, grabbing people and biting chunks off their bodies, you know, uh, craziness like that. And he's like, oh, no, that's not how it was at all. Um, and then you, the rest of the movie is basically his side of the story. Uh, <laughs> and neither necessarily is accurate according to history, but it's interesting. I like, I like, I like everything that... Trey Parker does though well not everything I should say there's some of the some things I didn't I haven't cared for but for the most part I like everything that they've done um and there's just little little things that I love like like the Native Americans are all Japanese and they speak Japanese in the thing and they do sign language that's like uh actual sign language that says things that they should not be saying in the movie you know stuff like that just little touches that are great I think it, I, one of the things they say in Japanese is this movie is crap, and I'm like, yes, yes. That's <laughs> see, that's that's my kind of humor right there. <laughs> anyway, um, it's good. I thought it was good before. I think it's good with the commentary too. Um, it gives you more information. They spend a little bit of time talking about his ex, which I knew it was going to come up because that's you know part of the thing, and then um, a lot of it talking about. They say, like, 14 times, they say, this is the best line of the movie, this is the best line of the movie. And then they all laugh at it. Um, and that's that's great fun. So, I would I would encourage people to watch it. Um, especially if you like South Park or any of the other things that, uh, that the guys have done. Um, and the commentary track, especially, is, is lots of fun. Yeah, it's... I didn't realize it was trauma when we had watched it. You had, you made me watch it ages ago. Mm -hmm. But then finding out, like, oh, oh, it totally fits. It's a similar kind of goofy, but I like their take on goofy comedy more than the usual trauma mm -hmm. goofy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. We watched that on Trauma Now, Trauma streaming service that has a 30-day free trial, and that's what I, I'm trying it out. And uh, the, it's a truly trauma experience. 
Mm-hmm. And what I mean is you could tell when you're on the trauma side, the trauma website, because Chrome's like, hey, this doesn't have a valid security certificate. Warning, <laughs> warning. And then you could tell when you switch over to the uh, the the video streaming service side, which is built on the back end of uh, Vimeo and a much more reliable and well pr- well put together site. So Trump. probably has a good s- security certificate as well. It had a good security certificate. Oh yeah, because I ain't gonna give it my yeah free trial or not. You still got to put your payment information in, right? Oh yeah, right. So it's the whole thing of like, oh, better put on the calendar. Cancel after X amount of, you know, cancel by this date. Right. Um, it's only like five bucks a month. But, Melanie's, I'm glad you picked that because that hit on something I noticed while I was browsing through myself. Something we've talked about, like, why doesn't Netflix do this? Troma now does this. They have commentary tracks that you can watch instead of, like, in addition to, as bonus features. For not everything, obviously, but a lot of the stuff mm-hmm. I noticed... And not just one commentary track. I think Toxic Avenger had like three different commentary tracks or something. Um, that so, yeah. tracks. Yeah. Uh-huh. See what I did there? It's also not just trauma. It's most. There's a lot of trauma. There's a lot of public domain. <laughs> domain old like a uh, uh, white 1932 white zombie and Carnival of Souls from the 60s. Like kind of public domain stuff. And then. Um, low budget and like you know it's trauma so like true indie stuff i noticed they have the thing like you could submit submit your own work if you want to be added to the whatever whatever i was like "Uh uh-huh that that makes sense um but that's fine that all fits trauma right yeah because isn't the idea behind it kind of everybody should be able to make a movie kind of a thing yeah yeah that's like lloyd uh kaufman's Mm-hmm. whole thing is like make, make your own damn movie mm-hmm. uh i think that's the name of his book or something so like <laughs> that was his whole that was been, always been his whole thing you know mm-hmm. forget hollywood make your own thing mm-hmm. um which i mean now like that's just sure mm-hmm. that's easier than ever that's what youtube is for i didn't watch a newer trauma movie i guess i'll segue into the one i'll talk about a little bit but I didn't watch a newer one, but I, I kind of wish I had because they're still making, they're still producing stuff because I want to know what a modern age trauma movies like. They look it, like the old ones. Spoilers for my review. Oh, really? <laughs> At least the one I watched. I'm so curious. Uh, I've read that, you know, Kaufman doesn't direct all of them, but he, man, Looking through it, I didn't realize how many of like the big trauma movies he directed a lot, a lot of them. And apparently, I've read that he's kind of a stickler. He always made sure to like shoot on film when possible, which surprises me now that like nobody's shooting on film. Hollywood does generally doesn't shoot on film all that much, mm-hmm. um, or they do. I guess it depends on the directors and stuff. But uh, yeah, I was curious about digital age traumas like so what i was going to watch because i wanted to stick with horror and melanie watched cannibal the musical and even though it's a comedy and a musical it's still got the cannibal thing Mm -hmm. so what i was going to watch was terror firmer which is supposed to be one of the better ones (laughs) um but i started the trial and i was like i kind of want to check out tromeo and juliet i'll watch that and then i'll watch terror firmer tomorrow well, I kind of ran out of time. So I watched Tromeo and Juliet. <laughs> Are any of them truly horror? Is is Tromeo and Juliet not horror? I think it kind of is. They all exist in a horror area where nothing where everything's handled like a weird sex comedy, but it's all kind of horrific. It it it's all horror. They they come from New Jersey. <laughs> That's a jer- <laughs> they Jersey sure do. I'll bring Paul in on the face palm. <laughs> <laughs> What's going oh, on, Paul? Weird. Not not too much. You hear me okay? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, so Tromeo and Juliet. Well, the reason I was curious about that one because that one's always stuck out as like, like really the, the trauma take on Romeo and Juliet. But also, I know 
it was one of the ones that James Gunn was co-writer on. And I want I definitely wanted to check out a James Gunn involved, you know, associated one. Um It's okay. <laughs> I I didn't hate it. <sighs> trauma it's so trauma. It it was it was directed by Lloyd Kaufman. Uh it's got that feel. It feels just completely in line with everything else I've ever watched that's trauma. Um it's definitely a comedy. There is gore. There's a lot of dark like there's dark jokes, like really dark jokes. And then there's just like dark stuff. Uh, and I'm not going to mention it too many times, but I will say incest and, and um, abuse play into this quite a bit. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and arguably incest becomes like a key plot point. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I mean, wasn't that kind of a key plot point throughout all of Shakespeare, though? So... Mm -hmm. No, not yeah. Romeo and Juliet, man. <laughs> well, not so, Romeo and Juliet, but so, other so, Shakespearean stories. Oh, yeah, sure. But, like, so you know the plot for the most part, right? Right. The ending, I, I won't go into big spoilers. The ending is different, though. And I kind of appreciate the brilliance of doing Romeo and Juliet, but changing the ending. Because it's like, that's the whole thing. Well, mm -hmm. the play's the thing. But that's the whole thing, right? It's a it's a tragedy. They did something else. But I'm not so that's there's a brilliance in that. Whereas at times like otherwise the plot for the most part is pretty close. But what they did instead is like oh ew, oh oh and I see it coming. They hint at they don't even hint at it. They foreshadow it. At one point, and I was like, oh, that sucks. That's gross. <laughs> um, the humor is so hit and miss for me. There's a few parts that made me laugh. There's a few, like, visual gags and a few little things that made me chuckle. There's a, a couple of the, like, kind of off-color jokes are awful, also hit and miss. Um, but overall, I don't, I don't find it as repugnant as I do in other things. But that just intentionally goofy, zany, woo -woo, like that type of thing, that type of humor. The the eyes go crossed, and there's the weird woo -woo -woo, and the honk honk, the weird sounds. Like they'll do that. Some sorry, <laughs> like that's that's a common element of these. The trauma tropes. Yeah, and I hate it in most other things, and I don't hate it here, but I don't like it either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's more tolerable. Um, but I'm still not a huge fan. Uh, I got, you get to see a close up of a woman's nipple being pierced for real pretty early on <laughs> in the movie. So that's a thing. Uh, Lemmy from Motorhead does the, like, nar he's the narration, like, oh. he'll come in during, like, the act changes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And his voice is not at all what I expected. And that's, there's these little t flourishes that I think are just kind of brilliant to do that. Like occasionally, especially when it's Romeo and Juliet, they'll slip into the actual dialogue from like this Shakespearean style dialogue. And it's either, you know, occasionally it's like spot on. Sometimes it's changed. Like they'll just change out certain references or they'll, ch they'll change the meaning. Like when, uh, I mean, the whole scenario is a little bit different, but when Romeo or Tromeo in this case, and that's it. His name's Tromeo because it is. Because of and course it is. It, it's um, trauma. Everything has to be traumated. Right. He he's like, it's when he's he's watching Juliet through a window. In this case, it's she's bound in a, a get glass box in that scenario. But um, what's in the box? <laughs> dreams. That's where they go to die. <laughs> It's super like that's a, it's a dark man. It so, gets so dark, but the, he's doing the little Romeo speech about like you know her her hand to her cheek if he could what he'd give to be that hand or whatever. Except like when they cut to it, it's her hand against her butt, so it's her butt cheek, and I'm like, <laughs> oh god, oh, god of course, why? Of course, it's yeah. So that's like <coughs> it's 
clever yet so juvenile and not clever. Um, and then occasionally they'll like say things in kind of a Shakespearean manner, but you know, reference like something uh, being like a barbell in a thrasher's ear, you know, like just like weird references and stuff like to modern things. But for the most part, the dialogue isn't that. It's just you know, modern, as in 1999, trauma talk, right? It's just people talking. It makes... It's so weird to take... Like, I get why... What's his name? Baz Luhrmann, the 90s Romeo and Juliet. I get why that world, other than it being like a, a crazy Baz Luhrmann, Romeo and Juliet world, why that world seems so heightened and weird and like... uh because they've got the gangs and all that, like the opposing houses. But when you take that idea of these opposing houses and then just put it in like kind of low rent looking New York, it doesn't really work. You're like, it's just these two dudes who don't like each other and a bunch of people who like keep <laughs> acting like there's beef. <laughs> like it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, the bum fights. <laughs> right. <laughs> and also the opposing houses are basically two guys who made porn uh, and it was a, a a deal that went wrong or something, um, or like one of them kind of got screwed over in a deal, and that was the whole thing. I, it's so ridiculous. What's up, Jasper? Um, that said, like this should uh, trauma me tra trauma movies should be the next season of GCU. Oh. Jas Jasper needs to experience this. Jasper. <laughs> you know what? I'm. Oh, it would be so tempting to do it just to just to make Jasper watch a bunch of trauma. Because it, so like many I said, to choose from too. It's hit or miss. Like parts of this are difficult to watch because it's cringy. Parts of it are difficult to watch because it's dark. Some of it's very entertaining. Um, the makeup, man. Like I know these are low budget. The makeup's always on point, like the, mm -hmm. the gore effects and stuff. And they they actually get some interesting, like weird gore and monster, like creature effects through, because Juliet has bad dreams. And the nightmare starts <laughs> when she wakes up. But um, man, they're, they're, their makeup artists are always on point, even for low budget stuff. I love the low budget trauma. That's why I like stuff like Toxic Avenger so great. That's like the full body crazy outfit. Um, there's a Halloween party, so I don't know if this counts as like actual appearances, but somebody's dressed up as Toxie. Somebody's dressed up as, is it Sergeant Tabuki or something? Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Kabuki Man. Kabuki Man, yeah, I'm not super familiar with that one. Um, and I think later there's an appearance by a blind lady who I think is a reference to Terror Firmer or something, uh, but I haven't watched that one. Anyway, listen, if you, if you know trauma, you'll know if you like this. This is, I think, one of the more, oh, this is one that people enjoy. Um, if you like trauma, you'll, you'll probably like this a lot. If you don't like trauma, I mean, this is trauma. Like, what are you, you can't, I feel like, I don't know, man. You can only recommend a trauma movie to a trauma fan. But if they're not a trauma fan, <laughs> yeah, I, no point. I mentioned it to a couple people, and um, I, I, I'm not necessarily saying only men can like it, but I said I mentioned trauma, and uh, women are the women around have been like, "What, huh?" And then the guys are like, "Oh yeah, the, the Tusk Avenger." Uh, so you know, I don't know. It's like the Three Stooges. Yeah. Well, no, it talks. Audience. <laughs> and Toxie was Toxie was obviously like their big breakout. I remember the Toxic Avengers cartoon, and that's that was Saturday morning kids cartoon, which mm -hmm. is mind blowing to even consider that that was a thing. But like, that's pretty mainstream. So, well, yeah. and now he's getting a mainstream reboot. So, I know I'm so curious as to what that's going to be. I know um, the the Hobbit guy, Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood is involved, and he loves he loves low grade and low budget horror. So, so he's part of it. One of the guys from The Boys is in it. Um, God, I don't remember who else is part of it, but 
weird. They're all like super trauma fans. Right, so, right. So it's being made by people who love the the genre. I guess it is its own genre. It is. Um, yeah, and, and like it's even referred to as like like when you're talking schlock movies, it's like there's schlock and then there's trauma schlock. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's like it's a step above schlock. I I agree, and I was I was telling Melanie, and I was trying to like formulate what the difference is because I struggle with trauma because it's really like pushes it pushes the boundary of like what I can really kind of deal with but I will admit even though if you look at like a lot of the elements it's the same stuff it's definitely a step above stuff like not to bring it up but and this is just the go-to because I know we talked about recently and maybe I'm wrong about it I haven't watched it but like Doll Factory or just any of the other sea of super low budget horror stuff on Tubi um it definitely seems like a step up from some of that stuff and I I feel like maybe it's the spirit behind it even if it's like similar stuff trauma like they're not just I mean they it is a business thing right but like they're not just cranking crap out it is so cynical too they want to make that this they want to make it this specific thing because they love doing this specific thing they have their niche whereas some of the other low budget like schlock stuff is just let's just crank this out because horror sells right like Mm -hmm. there's no kind of love of it whereas trauma there's a love of trash it's it's more self-aware it has fun at its own expense right and at least some of them, like Tromeo and Juliet, it's pushing. It's 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 being edgy. It's like it's James Gunn, the whole tweet thing. It's like did, Disney. Did you never? I know this is a, a fit, an over issue. Like it's done, but did you never see any of his previous work? Go look at any of it. <laughs> anyway. Mm-hmm. It's been about an hour, and uh, just still hasn't gone. So I think we should move on. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> no, you're right, Jesse. I mean, we'll, <laughs> we'll just keep that party going because this movie's the same kind of winner. It's uh, it's called Blood Junkie. Yes. Did you say Blood Junkie? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I initially was like, you know, I should go with something weird like surf Nazis or whatever. You know, but then I saw this made in 2010 and it, uh, it's called Blood Junkie and I'm kind of addicted to having the blood in my body. So this just made perfect sense to me. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing about it is it's kind of, you know, in the vein of of, uh, of a trauma movie, it's like a self-aware, almost homage to itself. Like it's like a callback to the eighties trauma movies. Like it's shot like one, like the whole thing, like the interactions are like the movies of that era, but still shot like, like purposely kind of bad, but also kind of charming and compelling at the same time. It's like the, uh, like I sent, I sent an image to you in the chat um, and the, the movie database uh, information, but, um, like it's this two dudes that are just looking to hook up with chicks in the worst possible way. Like, like in a dude, where's your car kind of way. Um, or yeah. Uh, so almost like a bill and Ted, but skeezy, super skeezy dudes. Um, yeah. Driving around in their mom's station wagon. And, uh, the whole crux of this thing is they, they're, they're trying to hook up with babes in the woods. So they go camping like you do in a horror movie, right? And it's got this super duper '80s, late '70s vibe to it, um, and uh, like the whole time I'm like, I'm like, kind of like this is either the best dumb thing I've ever seen <laughs> or the dumbest good thing I've ever seen. I don't know, I don't know, but like, there's a. Like the resolution of this movie made me mad at first because I was like, no, because they do like a they try to do like a clever plot twist thing at the end. And I'm like, no, that doesn't work because of the opening. 
And then I think about the opening a little harder. I'm like, oh, crap, it's kind of genius. <laughs> like, it works if I, if I think about it and realize what they actually pulled off there. Because they actually have a scene, um, they actually have a scene where a kid is like watching a television and they flip through different trauma movies. And it's like, oh, dang, this actually does kind of work. Mm-hmm. I, I, I feel like even in, it's so funny, even 99, they're like, ref, they're so self referential. Referential. There's a part where they're like showing different clips of movies because of like the editors, and they're all trauma movies. And they're like, oh, that's great. That looks great. Oh, that one's crap. <laughs> so that just seems like a thing they've always done, man. It's funny. I, I'm digging that that poster for sure. Well, you know, I, I when I saw it, I was like, yeah, Randy will dig this uh, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there's just like this abandoned building that's going to be like a chemical factory. And I assume that these people just had access to this abandoned building because it doesn't look like it's been set dressed or anything. It's like like a legit abandoned building kind of thing. Um, and then this, this guy apparently is there and picks people off that comes, comes into the area going to deal. And he's a junkie for blood. Like that's his thing is he like <laughs> drinks blood. That's what he does. He's got it's like a, a it, like a it, vampire it, bat. If, if that were a person and he like, will like abduct people and hang on to them and just slowly drain them and then drink them through that tube that's attached to the gas mask for whatever reason. You like screw a can onto that and then that's how you drink your blood. (laughs) I guess. (laughs) It's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous, but also kind of great. They they have this, they have this whole dynamic with the little, with like the little brother who has to come on the camping trip so that the sister can come because just randomly mom and dad left. They just went out of town. They want to, they, one of my favorite lines is like, uh, at the very beginning, it's the, the, there's the note and like the money for the emergency fund because mom and dad went out of town and it's like, and, and she just calls her like gal friend and she's like, Hey, how much booze can you get for thirty five dollars? And the, and the girl on the other end of the phone is like, like a crap ton. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, for thirty five dollars? I mean, even back then, no, not a lot. Stones? Like bad booze, I suppose. I don't know. I love they can get that uh, case of Keystone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, okay, that's true. You want to party for cheap? Um, That's how you do it. I, I, you love it when the film's overview includes shot in Wisconsin for six thousand dollars. Includes like how low budget it is. Yeah, yep. yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, wow. okay. That's super cheap. Yeah. Huh? Sounds cool. W- would it worth a watch? You know, if you if you like this style of movie, I I would recommend it. If okay. you like this style of movie, obviously, if you don't, do not waste your time. Don't. Just don't. Because, uh, like, most of the movie is not, does not have anything to do with the blood junkie. Like, the blood junkie really comes in in the last 30 minutes. The rest of it is just these two, two skeezy dudes that are too old to be actual teenagers, like, trying to hook up with some teenagers in the woods. Is it real meandery? Yeah. It makes me think of, what was it? I don't even remember the name of it, but I watched uh, last year when we did Clowns, I watched some super low budget clown slasher thing, and it was awful. It was just awful and lazy and so, like, bad. And this sounds like, I mean, what's that's like the classic trope of, like, low budget, go shoot in the woods. You don't need right, permits right. to just go shoot in the woods. No set dressing. But this sounds better than that, than this, the clown thing. So This felt, you know, like I have love for like a Christopher R. Mim type of movie. Right. This felt like that, only like an 80s approach. Like somebody okay. really liked those 80s movies that were like found, found movies that somebody else, you know, like the kind of thing that Troma would like find and then put out there as right. a Troma movie kind of thing. Right. Um, cool. That's what it felt like. But it felt like somebody made one on purpose. <laughs> they did it so purpose. bizarre <laughs> yeah it's so bizarre and like kind of 
way more fun than I thought I would have. Okay, cool. Well, I've got Troma now for at least 30 days, so I might have to check that one out. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Check it out. I'd be interested to see what your take is on it. So did you buy that? I rented it. Oh, you rented I it? I spent okay. actual money on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Good, call. Good call. Now, we are nearing the end of the show, but Paul... You requested trauma, and you, I'm assuming, have a trauma-related thing coming up, but uh, did you watch anything specific for this, or do you have a specific trauma movie you want to talk about or recommend? Or uh, Actually, it's uh, Poultry Geist, uh, oh, Dawn okay. of the Chicken Dead. That's the chicken one I mentioned last week. I was like, I know there's something about a chicken. What's that one? I don't want to watch that. <laughs> um, it's actually, it, it's, it, it's fun and schlocky. Um, and you, you get past the gore and the sex jokes. There, there's a uh, fun message behind it about like big business coming in, taking over the little guy sort of thing. And th- that that's kind of what I like about a lot of the like trauma, trauma flicks. There, there's that uh, message behind it. Like Toxie, it's, you know, picking on the little guy and pollution. Uh, poultry Geist has uh, the you know big business coming in, taking over the mom and pop places. There's a new movie coming out, uh, hashtag Shakespeare Crap Storm. Um, not the actual title, but gotcha. Okay, okay, I got uh, it. It's basically the trauma That's... take on Tempest by Shakespeare. Um, and it kind of takes on whaling and a bunch of different things like that. So, you know, it is far, you know, while there's always that schlock and that schlock appeal, there, there's generally something behind it as well. So they find a way right. to tackle like the social issues with fun and humor and s- still get it out there. Right. Mm-hmm. Cool. You know, so. I might actually have Poultry Geist. I don't know, man. I bought a bunch of like random DVDs back in the day. Anything that looked crazy, I'd buy it. And I feel like Poultry Geist. Maybe that's why that one stuck in my head. I might have that. I, I don't. It's, it, it's a fun watch. I mean, it's it's definitely top tier trauma. I mean, <laughs> is Thanks Killing a trauma movie, or is that something totally different? I, I feel I could be wrong, man. It. It would be kind of at home with it, but I feel like it's right. not. I was say I'm not sure. And what I know of that, and I could be wrong, like that might be a good example of like wannabe trauma, but not quite there. But I could be wrong. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's often imitated, never really, uh, which is weird because you know it doesn't seem like it'd be that hard to mimic. <laughs> right. I mean, it, it's trauma. You know, and as Lloyd will point out, he's the king and queen of schlock. Uh, but yeah, it's trauma definitely has a niche audience that keeps growing, and it, it astounds me that th- this audience it keeps finding new fan bases like each year. So it's it doesn't totally surprise me though because it's. And it's, I guess this is a trend that's kind of come and gone, and it comes and goes. But uh, it still it falls in line with, like, sometimes you'll see, what was it? There's Hobo with a Shotgun mm-hmm. and just, like, the intentionally schlocky, cheesy, uh, low-budget, although sometimes they have big names attached, and sometimes they're just low-budget. Melanie and I watched, what was that one a while back, Melanie, with the priest? Velocipasture pasture or something. Yeah. Yeah. We watched that a while back. I don't know why, but we did. Um stuff like that kind of comes and goes as being popular with various people. And trauma like it's like, well, trauma's right at home in that. They've been doing it since nineteen seventy nine. Like mm-hmm. so so yeah, yeah, it's not surprising that they uh, retain and build have built an audience. Well, like what slays me about it is like the same people who jump on to following trauma every year are the, you'll hear them complain that 
like, and I'll use Halloween Kills as an example, don't have a good story, or the acting sucks, or it's like, so you can like a movie where it's cheesy, it's hokey, and schlocky. See, you're touching but, on something. You're touching on something that you touch on in the comments that always <laughs> ruffles a few feathers around here, because it depends on the overall presentation and how it strikes me. There are movies that I'll watch that I love. The, the story's crap, or the plot's crap, or it's got crap acting, um, or whatever. But it's got something. It's got some entertainment value, something that hooks me, some charm, some appeal. And then there's other stuff that could be like a nice plot, objectively well acted, uh, really well produced. But it's missing something. It's missing soul, or it's missing, or maybe it's a just a slog. Like there's a thing, and I don't want to say a soul, but maybe there's a soul to each <laughs> artistic work. <laughs> It's a thing you can't define. You can't scientifically find it. Now, Andy, let's play a game of hide the soul. Hide the soul. <laughs> uh, that's the other thing I forgot to talk about. We do not have time. But, um, yeah, like, it just, I touched on it when we were talking about Malignant. Like, I don't know what it is about something like Malignant and something else, where Malignant, there's aspects that I just, ugh, didn't like this. Whereas other movies that might even, like, if you look at it and add it up, might be a worse movie than Malignant. But, man, I get so much more entertainment. Malignant, if that whole movie was, the la was like, jail scene on, if that was the whole movie, that movie would have been amazing. <laughs> so, like, it, there's, there's so many factors to come. And that's why when it comes to, like, ratings, even though it doesn't always work out, a lot of times I just kind of have to go with my initial gut. Like, eh, uh, sure, I'll give uh, this the same rating as, like, Citizen Kane or something, <laughs> right? Like, you know, it just depends. Although mm -hmm. Citizen Kane's a little, you know, it's maybe not the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> it's not, but they've been saying it is for hundreds of years. It lost that. For, for yeah. the last 40 <laughs> years. <laughs> Kane died so the, tonight. 40 years of, uh, 40 years Citizen Kane has haunted the movie industry. <laughs> <laughs> Much longer. Uh, that's a good point, though. Halloween Kills. I thoroughly enjoyed that watch. I, fun experience. There's some awesome scenes. But at the same time, I can get on here, and Jesse had a little bit of a bone to pick. And I'm like, <laughs> you know what? You're right. Screw this part and this part and this thing. Oh, yeah. But overall, I didn't hate it. Well, I don't know I don't what expect, I feel. I don't expect people to love every movie. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, that's just asinine. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's illogical and doesn't make any sense at all. But, and when I say this, I'm not even talking about you specifically. Uh, you know, I'm talking the, I'd say, viewing audience in general. It, it's, people will say... They absolutely hate a movie because it has zero stories, you know, zero acting ability, but then praise another movie for essentially the same thing. So well, it, it's always confused me. That runs into, well, that runs into the thing of criticism, like the issue with criticism in general or the star ratings. Yeah. Because when you're, when you're discussing a movie, Yeah, you're trying to pinpoint what elements of it you don't like. And it could have similar elements to this other movie. Whereas in this movie, I didn't like it. I'm going to point to the fact that this and this. That really bugged me. Whereas in another movie, I loved it. It's got this and this, but it has this, which I really liked. Like, it's just a matter, like... It's like, it's the whole thing, again, star ratings. Like, you're you're bound to run into oxymorons. It's like, well, how can you give, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street to the same rating as this? Like, I mm -hmm. I don't know, but that's, you, it, it just kind of can. You know, and like with Troma, you know what you're getting when you yeah. go into it. So you can't really go in with, you, you can't come out like, oh, well, it didn't meet my expectations. 
And if it doesn't, <laughs> boy, you have really high expectations yeah. of a film. <laughs> you didn't understand what you were doing. <laughs> That's right. true. You didn't understand the assignment. Now, right. uh, Brightburn, if that was a trauma movie, might have, might have felt a little bit different about it. Right. That's a good example of expectations not matching up with a... Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, because I don't know. I might have given this a very similar star rating, like Blood Junkie. I would have maybe given it a similar star rating to Brightburn and not necessarily... Because not trash it. Like yeah, we like Bright like Burn. well, yeah, like Brightburn is made very well, and I can see like the craft that was put into it. But at the same time, I'm like this Brightburn for me gave me nothing new. You know, like they just took Superman's story and tried to make it scary poorly. Mm -hmm. And just real quick, I know we're it's getting late, but. Um... I think one of the things that I, I take into consider, consideration, too, is um, the people that are making trauma movies oftentimes are brand new people. Um, I mean, they, the, you know, they'll have the producer guy, then they go there for him to help them out because most of them are, are just mm -hmm. in film school or maybe never even went to film school. They, they just want to make a movie. They don't have the resources that a, a studio has, so I can forgive so much more in something they make than I can in a, a studio movie. That's a big part of it, too. Yeah, that plays in that plays into the idea of like different factors that maybe you don't even think of when like you're initially discussing it, but that still plays a aspect in how you feel about it, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you're when you're when we're sitting here on cam and we're like thinking like, well, what what I didn't like, what I didn't like, the story sucked, uh, but then you're not necessarily thinking about the fact that, but you know, I kind of give it a bump up because like. It's obviously a low budget. Uh, they had like the love of the genre, like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If, and especially a show like Grolix, um and other like see your pants podcast reviewer people, we're not writing their reviews out. So we're not mm -hmm. able to like, and it's, it's very apparent, but we're not able to fully pinpoint i try to think about it sometimes you can before. see us change our minds uh in real time uh -huh. oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the review of movies that i have in the shower before Grawlix versus what what actually hits hits cam i should just put the cam in the shower no oh my <laughs> you're quick on that one be a way to bring up viewers <laughs> different that audience escalated very different audience. <laughs> I, yeah. that would be that would be for only fans the sylvie shower cam since we since uh, paul since we brought you on our viewer count has dropped it's not because you drove them away it's because our viewer is now on the show on the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay well we need to get out of here real quick paul uh, do you have a trauma thing related thing coming up? Yes, on the 25th, an interview with Mr. Trauma himself, the king of Traumaville, Uncle Lloyd Kaufman. You got Mrs. Lloyd Kaufman? Yes, I did. I did not expect that. That's it. A took it. a year to get that one all sat down. That's amazing. I'm impressed. It was probably one of the most excited i've been for an interview in a very long time <laughs> i'm highly impressed because it, it, it was a lot of you know you reach out to one person they're like well you need to get a hold of so-and-so okay well no we need to put you in touch with this person okay so then you know just go through like everybody and you eventually get the assistant and he's like yeah we can do it i'm like oh thank you thank you very much oh i love you <laughs> that's 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 cool okay so that that's coming out the 25th yep okay on uh, Moose's Monster Mash, I'm assuming? Yep. Cool. We talk all things trauma, including his new movie, Hashtag Shakespeare Crap Storm, and Troma Now. And he it's... talks Troma Now a lot. Interesting. Okay. Does he talk about uh, <laughs> the Vimeo backend and how it's much nicer than when you uh, hop over to the regular no, site? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, it's worked well. Like, I... I've used the app, sent it over to the Chromecast, 
Melanie, I'm assuming you watched on Roku. Like, I, it's yeah. worked well, so no complaints there. Mm -hmm. I will say, after interviewing this guy, I could, you know, a lot of people could take lessons on how to self-promote. Because just mid-conversation, you know, he'll be talking about a movie. And you can watch it over at Troma now for, <laughs> of course. you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> of you know, course. first 30 months, you know, first 30 days free. And then right back into the conversation. It's like, wow. Oh, yeah. He's a king at uh, that. That's how you, that's how you. That's how you launch Tromaville. Like, That's how you like, become. I, I, I respect Coffin. the hustle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Um, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I guess you could stick around to the end. Hey, Melanie. Yeah. What should we be amazed about? Anything? Sure. Um, just a, a little one short. Um, some scientists were uh, going to study something in the Car uh, Caribbean or Caribbean, however you want to say it. And they heard a well. They didn't hear actually because it's lower than we can than human ears can hear. But the the you know the equipment picked up a sound, and so they did a couple other little tests to see what it was. And it apparently is that the waves um, in the base the, they go um, into this basin and then come back out. Uh, every 120 days and the wave pattern um like any other wave pattern um produces a sound and so the sound the caribbean makes is an a flat <laughs> really yep cool i like huh. it yep you know uh <laughs> the, the fawns the fawns he uh he jumps over sharks mm -hmm. probably in the caribbean and he says, hey. hey. <laughs> That's all I got. But I couldn't not. You, you saw it on my face. I see, yeah, I see yeah. something. Um, Jesse, you got anything exciting coming up? Anything you want to tell people about? I feel like I do, but I don't know what it is. So I, I have. Oh, yeah, you. <laughs> well, you, I was yeah. To, I was to gonna try. I you. was gonna no. I was gonna. I was just trying to pimp your thing. Uh, oh, but you okay. know what? You know what? I what? I heard. I heard oh. that there is like an album coming out, uh, and uh, you could also also get a T shirt from the guy that makes these albums. Like not of, only a T shirt of that. Of that band, B band. I don't know. You're right. I mean, I I feel like that's. It's so weird talking about it because I do like what I, I I have to switch gears to like. It's super science. Super science is coming out with this, but it's like it's just me. <laughs> it it's just me. Um, yeah. So, I have an album. Finally finished for Halloween. It's one I've wanted to put out for a long time. Uh, tomorrow. It will be out tomorrow. In fact, after this, I probably have some more uploading and stuff I need to do about it. But um, it'll be out tomorrow. Go to superscience.xyz. I know that's a weird top-level domain, but uh, superscience.xyz or whatever. That'll redirect you to Bandcamp. It'll, it's going to hit Bandcamp first. You can uh, listen, stream it there for free, or you can buy to download digital. Um, get MP3, FLAC, whatever. Uh and then it will be hitting, also hitting iTunes, Amazon Music, and all the other places. Probably a little bit later. It takes a little bit to approve, and I haven't uploaded to the to that distribution yet. But um, and uh, not only can you get a Super Science shirt, uh, but I'll actually be uploading a, a, a new shirt with a specific design to match that album uh, tonight as well. And you can get that, at strangers. Uh, from Strangers with T-shirts, go to strangerswithtshirts.com. Mm -hmm. So do all those things and get all the stuff. Yep. Um, the album, by the way, it's it's it you know it's since since stuff since way stuff inspired by seventies eighties horror and sci-fi. Mm -hmm. uh, Very John Tar Carpenter esque. Carpenter esque. Uh, a lot of these I kind of channeled a little bit of the 70s stuff so i tried to pull in a little bit more synth sounds that sound a little bit 70s but it's still definitely got the 80s kind of vibe um, so to that 70s album kind of kind of uh it definitely has a disco-y sounding song on it um but it's like 
it's it's nine tracks, five new tracks, and four that have been released over the years on various like Halloween compilation albums and mixtapes and stuff. Nice. I'd give them all a brand new mix, new masters, and uh, be ready to go tomorrow. Um, and then, real quick, Paul, we mentioned your episodes coming out the twenty fifth, uh, but you can check that out at electronicmediacollective.com. I'll try to keep an eye out for that one and send me a message so I can make sure to get it posted promptly. Yeah. Um, and as for anything else, Hey, thanks for watching. This has been a long one. Sorry guys. Uh, if you want to hear more, go to grolicspodcast.com. I just remembered. I don't think I uploaded the video of last week's to YouTube yet. It's been busy. It's been a busy week. Um, go to grolicspodcast.com. If you want to check out more episodes, there's, there's a lot. There's years. Some would say there's like 99 episodes, but if you look at them, there's like over 200. So it's fun. <laughs> who's got, counting? Got 99 episodes, but 101. Uh, 101. <laughs> Easy to it. Easy to it. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Take it easy. Uh, be careful in Tromaville. It's a mm -hmm. dangerous place. Yep. <laughs> dangerous place.